Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going over uh, what is in my hospital bag, also my husband's hospital bag and the baby's hospital bag. Uh, we did two bags instead of three, just to try to condense a little bit. Um, in this portion of the video, I'm going to be going over what is in, um, I would say my toiletry bag, <laughs> but what we packed as far as toiletries. Um, I am a type A personality with certain things, especially with planning. So I did make um, a pack list. Um, I kind of have it like categorized and what's highlighted is what um, is already packed and what's not highlighted. It could be last minute items that I need to grab um, or just other things like I need to make a playlist. I need to make a, a song recording my voice for, uh, not a song, but like a track, recording my voice over soothing music, doing birth affirmations, making a list, um, a contact list or a, a Facebook post, just writing it up so that once the baby's born or once wherever, where, <laughs> once we are ready to announce, my husband can just copy and paste it with her picture. Easy peasy. Um, I also have a list for hubby of things to try um, while I'm in labor, like could be different back massage techniques. It could be things to say to me, things to do to me. It could be to leave me alone. <laughs> Just whatever you feel the moment needs, basically. <laughs> Excuse me. So I have had my bags packed since about 28 weeks. It is early, um, but all of my kids tend to come early. I had my son at 36 six and my daughter at 38 zero and this one she's already given us a run for our money so i am 36 weeks or i will be 36 weeks tomorrow yeah i really thought i was in labor two days ago <laughs> and even a month ago i've had other scares so hopefully she stays in and keeps cooking but just in case i'd rather have the bags packed and ready to go i would recommend not actually putting the bags into the car um, only because like your toiletries and stuff like that, if they're left in the heat, if you're in a area with a warmer climate, they can explode <laughs> or leak, um, which is never nice. So you can always put them, um, put your bags in the trunk and then keep like, I have a bag that has all my toiletries in it, like next to the door. So like, as we're running out, we know, okay, we got to grab this bag with the car seat. So let's start with my husband's because I feel like his is so much easier. Everybody's list will obviously differentiate a little bit, but this is what we use on a daily basis. So I know that pretty much everything here will get used. So I have a travel size deodorant. Um, I have his three in one men's body wash. Um, his body wash is huge and so is my shampoo. Um, and with men, it's like hair, body and face. Is that what the three-in-one is? I don't even know. But someone gifted us this little thing and it comes with stickers so you can label what it is. I just did blue for boy, pink for girl. So this is my Awa Pui shampoo and this is his men's three-in-one hair, face, body, shampoo, whatever. <laughs> um, and then obviously I have toothbrush. We couldn't pack the same toothpaste because he's a Colgate guy. I'm a crest girl <laughs> trying to pack light, but it just doesn't happen. So yes, toothbrush, toothpaste. I have a razor, just something disposable. Chances are he probably won't shave, but just in case he starts to get itchy or feels like he needs to, that's there. Um, I still need to get a travel size of shave cream. We have lotion, which is in here. We don't really use lotion on our bodies, but, um, he does give me a foot massage every night, <laughs> so we will definitely make use of that. And then Pond's Moisturizer, that's like his go-to thing. And then Vaseline. Lots of skincare stuff for daddy. And then also the um, Vaseline chapstick. And then mine, I usually use the regular deodorant, but I kind of wanted to try the spray. So I packed both. Do I need both? No, <laughs> but we will see what I end up using, um, whatever. Uh, and then I have my toothbrush, my toothpaste. I had a small toothpaste, but um, 
with both of them, I was there four nights and five days. Um, I had an emergency C-section with my first, a regular C-section with my second, and they were both were kept longer because of jaundice. I am doing a VBAC, a VBA2C <laughs> vaginal birth after two cesareans this time around, and I'm pretty adamant about it, and I have an excellent support system. My provider is on board, won't even really mention induction or C-sections or anything like that with me, um, so I'm pretty blessed in that aspect. But just in case, since uh, once we are admitted, we're not allowed to leave, especially my husband, um, and we can't have anyone bring us stuff. And on top of that, we are about 40 minutes away from the hospital. So even if someone could bring us stuff, the chances of us finding someone to bring us stuff is slim to none. So I have this, it might be enough, <laughs> but I just like to be on the safe side. So I'm packing a bigger one. Again, do I need two toothpaste? Absolutely not. But I'm gonna bring it anyway because <laughs> I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. That's my theory. So I already showed you the Awapui travel shampoo. Um, I have Listerine. Why? Well, obvious reasons. You don't want to have bad breath. <laughs> so I was thinking, um, I do have midwives and I know a lot of times they'll say like lock in. Like it depends on what they feel is working best for the mom. But they'll say like lock in on my eyes or just lock in on something and just it's okay. Like if you're breathing into my face, lock in on something and we're gonna breathe together. So before the whole COVID thing, I already had the idea of packing mouthwash so that I'm not huffing my nasty breath onto the midwife. <laughs> um, and I probably still will use it anyway, um, even though we have to have a mask on pretty much 24 seven while we're in the hospital. The only exception is um, like after the baby's born, if there's nobody in the room, then we can take it off. But anytime someone comes in, we have to have a mask on. I have a Lever 2000. It's just a little bar. And then my skin is super sensitive and I get really itchy, especially with pregnancy hormones. Um, I've been checked, it's not cholestasis, thankfully. But um, I have Dove Deep Moisturizing Body Wash. I actually also use Aveeno Itchy Body Wash. It's like a soothing thing, but I haven't had time to put it into like one of these small travel containers yet. So I don't know if I will be doing that or if this is going to be sufficient. I think I might even just keep this upstairs in the shower or like at a bigger bottle and see if that soothes my skin when my skin gets like really itchy. If not, I'm gonna have to pack the other one if that doesn't work. Pampers wipes. I know that the hospital provides wipes for the baby, at least my hospital does. I know a lot of hospitals in um, UK actually don't, and I think Australia also. I don't think they provide much of anything for the baby, surprisingly. But here, my hospital, they provide baby wipes. Actually, let me skip that part. <laughs> I will go over that when I do the baby's bag. These Pampers wipes that I have here, I use the Pampers Sensitive Wipes. They're soft and I actually use them to take my makeup off. I don't really wear much, much makeup, just like um, the primer, eyeshadow, eyeliner, that's it. It's very, very easy to take off with the Pampers Wipes and they're a lot cheaper than regular makeup removing wipes. I have my electric razor, which I did not pack yet. I have disposable razor. And I have Q-tips because Sometimes my ears get itchy if um, if I let them, you know, build up too much wax and then my doctor yells at me, your ears are too clean. The wax is there for a reason. It's itchy. Um, bobby pins, because, you know, maybe you might need one if you're pushing and your hair is getting in your face. My hair is really long, <laughs> so I can just put it all behind me and it's not gonna come forward except for like maybe a few flyaways. So that is that. I don't have shaving cream for either one of us yet. My conditioner is this, the Aussie Three Minute Miracle. It's amazing by the way, it's $3 in most places and it smells so good and you can just squeeze it right out of the bottom, which is why I have it in a bag. <laughs> just in case it gets pushed on something and then I just kind of roll it into the bag. Obviously if you have a Ziploc, even better. If not, it's totally fine. I am a contacts wearer, so I will have my glasses, extra contacts, contact case, solution, and drops. Now I have this clear care thing that comes with like a cage, 
and then I pop them out and I put them in the cage and it kind of bubbles to get rid of all the protein that had built up. Honestly, I don't usually take my contacts out unless they're bothering me. This might not get used, but again, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So with certain things also, you have to think most hospitals, I shouldn't say most, but most of what I've heard of, they keep you um, continuous monitoring. Monitoring, because I can speak English. Um, unfortunately, ours does, except for when you go to the bathroom. So for some reason, if I need something, I want it to put where it is. So obviously clothes, underwear, bras, socks, stuff like that, probably not gonna need during labor. Half the time, even though they give me a gown, I just, whatever, free ball it. <laughs> like they're, they're gonna see everything anyway. I'm not comfortable with that on me, just whatever. You don't like it, don't come in my room. So that stuff isn't really necessary during labor. It's more for like after labor, but I prefer to put on my list to where things are located. So like I have my glasses, extra contacts, contacts, case, solution, and drops. And then in parentheses, it says purse. So I'll have my purse here with me. That way, if I say, babe, I need this, um, then, you know, he can just check here and okay, it's in the purse. Um, if I'm in transition, I mean, I'd probably be able to tell him where something is located, but if I'm in transition, chances are I'm going to be like a zombie and I'm probably not going to take my contacts out in transition, but that was just an example. <laughs> and then I have my hairbrush. My hairbrush and my makeup, I always keep in the car. That's because our bathroom is slanted. I have to kind of squat to see myself in the mirror. So I always put my makeup on in the car when I actually do put it on. And my hairbrush, same. I always keep it in the car. I usually just use my fingers, but I keep it in the car because I have a daughter who also has very long hair. And in the morning before I would take her to school, after I drop one off at the bus stop, when we would go sit in the school parking lot and I would do her hair right there. So it's always nice to have a brush accessible. But obviously he won't be able to go to the car. So I will just keep that in my purse. That's totally fine. So I have hairbrush. My chapstick is in my purse. Makeup, it's in my car right now. But I'm hoping, um, I do have it on my last minute list at the very bottom um, to grab the Pampers wipes and the makeup. Right down here to grab that stuff as we're arriving at the hospital. Another thing that could technically classify as toiletry, but I don't have it on that list, is the perennial massage oil. If you have a midwife or if your husband or support partner is going to be doing that for you, then you could bring your own. We have one that we got from Amazon. I forget the name. I wanna say it's like Earth Mama or something. That could be really wrong. But a lot of times the midwives will already have like vitamin E oil or some type of mineral oil. And then I have um, tweezers, nail clippers, extra scrunchies. I, this is a really bad example. I am known for my headbands. I have all different kinds. I have a flower of every single different color. And I try to coordinate it with my outfit every day, <laughs> except for today. So I definitely want to have my headbands for while I'm there. And then I have, aside from the nail clippers for us, um, I have baby nail files so this is from baby goal and this is a little pack of three nail files it came from amazon um it's a glass nail file a lot of people don't know that when the baby's born their nail is still technically attached to their skin so you can kind of actually unintentionally hurt them by cutting their nails so someone said you know you shouldn't use the clippers just get the nail files and you can kind of file it down. But even when I file the baby's nails down, they still scratch their face. So I have mittens packed for the baby, which I will get to when I do the baby's bag. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything else. I think that should be it for the toiletry bag. I'll be back and I will do a video of my husband's stuff and my stuff.